Welcome to the European Podcast. My name is Karolina Zbetniewska and I'm the Editor-in-Chief at Euractiv Poland. Today we'll look into infamous LGBT-free zones. These notorious municipalities and regions of Poland have declared themselves unwelcoming of an alleged LGBT ideology. There were over 80 such zones, which Ursula von der Leyen and Viera Jourova, among others, call the humanity-free zones, for which there is no place in our union. In protest against anti-LGBT resolutions admitted by communes of Poland, a Polish LGBT plus activist, Bart Staszewski, started signposting such communes as LGBT-free zones in protest against, in short, homophobia. In this podcast, I will talk to Bart about his project and its political background. Listen in. You are the LGBTQI plus activist. Can you introduce the situation of uh, these people in Poland? How do you see it? Are homophobic resolutions and actions of the authorities expressing deep down beliefs of our Polish society? Or is it the batu directed top da- to down? I strongly believe that we as Polish society are tolerant, are with the respect to the human dignity. The only problem we have are stupid politicians who have been chosen. And this is the only problem we have, I think, so far. Even the tolerance for the marriage equality, for the civil unions, are still quite huge. A part of what politicians are representing, homophobic attitude the politicians has, this is the problem. I think this is the crucial problem for our, for our presence and for our future, to fight them. Okay, but you said that about stupid politicians that were chosen by the people, and earlier on you mentioned that our society is quite tolerant. Still, the stupid politicians, as you call them, are winning on this anti-gender, anti-homophobic agenda. So how is our society quite tolerant? I think that the problem is that they are not choosing them because of their homophobia, but people are choosing them for the welfare program, for the conservative values they are representing, for some values they are presenting. Civic, civic platform for years was cutting down all of the values, anything. They left everything empty. And now the Land Justice Party is filling this emptiness with their ideas, with their uh, attitude to the history, to the Polish history and past, uh, with their kind of, of, of thinking about this. So I, I don't believe that people were voting for the Land Justice because they want to hang the all gay people or whatever the Confederacja Party is telling us an example. I believe that they are have different reasons to, to vote for them and different connections like the PSL, uh, which is strongly connected to the village and to the people living uh, a part of the big cities. So there are different reasons and I don't believe in that inside of those reasons was the homophobic reasons or maybe in the very small amount. In your view, who stays behind the anti-LGBT resolutions in the Polish communes? I think it was the Lone Justice Party who organized themselves at the very first part of the story when 2019 happened. And there uh, was this known declaration made by the Chaskowski who signed the pro-LGBT card in Warsaw. It wake up the demons and the uh, people from the alt-right part of Poland. They decided to, to, to fight back. And we seen that everything began in Lublin, in, in, in Lubelskie, in Świdnik, to be, to be direct. And do you think that the labeling of the communes as LGBT-free zones is not harming their citizens as well? I don't think so. I, 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 th- I have got many of message- messages from people, emails even, uh, from the people living there that are expecting uh, me to go there because they are living there, they grow up there, Uh, and they uh, are very thankful for me that I came there. I think that is very important to show that homophobia don't pay off, uh, that it's not something that you can hide in because you are now shy of what you've done. You were so proud about you declaring the zone that you are the against the LGBT ideology. So be proud of the same sign because the right-wing uh, council member or the politicians used to make the disclaimers. They used to make, uh, the, uh, they used to reframe the language. This is this whole story of telling that there is some LGBT ideology branding the LGBT right as an ideology. I remember all those interviews the council member gave last year that they are again that, that ideology means for them same-sex couple walking on the streets holding their hands or the pride marches. 
for them this is ideology and for the whole, whole rest of the world this is the human dignity we are speaking about the dignity of the uh, and the, the 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 privacy that you can be safe at your home that you can be safe on the street holding the hands of beloved one it's not an ideology so since we heard that the ideology for them is the the human rights for it was obvious for me that we cannot use the same language because this is the reframing of the language they are doing making disclaimers that we are not speaking about people, but we are speaking about our ideology. So into my mind came this idea that, okay, so if they are so proud about them being so homophobic, let's visualize it because they are hiding be behind the walls of this uh, ideology. Just a follow-up uh, question. Do you think that binding European fans with not being LGBT free zone is wise? Or is it an easy tool to attack Brussels as attacking natural values plus depriving local citizens from money that could be used for making their livelihoods better? I think this, there is no good choice in this situation. And the politics is the fight of the muscles, if I could say. Everyone needs to, if there is a not, not common sense that we are sharing the same values and we are using money for those values, we, don't, we are not getting money for the European Union or the Norwegian funds because they are liking us. No, we are sharing those values uh, that are the common core of the European Union, which is human dignity, equality, and so on. So if, if there is a moment when we see that the one of the, our fellows is not uh, sharing those values and they are just using it, and even using it for the uh, homophobic purposes, so there is something wrong ongoing. So the, there is a, the start of the debate. And so at the end of the 2019, the, the, it began with the European Union resolution against LGBT free zones. It was the first warning point, if you could say it like so. Since that, nothing happened from Polish side. We, everybody was so proud about the, this LGBT free zones that we will not give up. European Union will do, will do nothing to us. And so now we are paying the price for it. Of course, we all are paying price for our government. And it's usually how it's happened when the, our politicians are making bad decisions that we pay for it as all. I just ho I'm just hoping that uh, people will be a bit wiser next time they, when they will vote for the politicians. It's hard because they have in their hand the public TV, which is making horrible propaganda and blaming everybody, but not those who should be blamed. So we are in the very uh, horrible circle, of, of, circle of, of, of the fake news. But I think that this is a good way. It's the only way uh, I think we can preserve whatever we have. And the only way uh, the, the law and justice party is a, a bit confused and scared of something. Of course, officially, they will be proud and they will tell that the European Union will not tell them what to do. But we know that behind curtains, they're doing everything to stop uh, to stop European Union of doing what they are doing and to not have any more repercussions of, of their movement. And we see that there is no more of the LGBT free zone created in Poland since January. So the effect is they can tell whatever they want, but they are not creating any more zones. I think it's a chilling effect. Are any disappearing? Uh, yeah, I think there's two places. It was Stum province, we took down one of the declaration and another, which was recently done in the city of what I don't remember the name, but it happened recently and it was, they took down the bill from the Ordo Juris, the family charter bill. This before from the Stum was the statement against the LGBT ideology. And I think it's a very good movement. I mean, we see that the people, the, 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 the council members are going or making revision of what they done and they are just taking it down. If you could define which communes got the stickers, got the labels of LGBT free zones, what was the basis for that? I am going to highlight this homophobia by my sign to those communes who introduced the bills called Statement Against LGBT Ideology, which is branding human rights, LGBT rights as an ideology, fighting them. And they voted for this statement in these communes. So it's around 50 places in Poland. And I am going there with my sign project, making a picture of those city names. I'm hanging my sign, making a picture, sometimes adding something, some description on it to the internet and just posting it. And two of those cities started lawsuits against, telling that they are not discriminator discriminating anybody, that they are open for everybody, but they're just against so-called LGBT ideology. Clementina Suhano writes about radically religious groups existing internationally and funded by Russian oligarchs close to Putin. How do you see that? That would mean that our authorities are just naive puppets while activists are pawns in some bigger geopolitical scheme. 
So I believe that there are some politicians that could have some uh, common agenda for, for Russia. And maybe they met some Russian politicians or oligarch or what something like this. But I think that the, they just sharing the same common homophobic point of view, ultra conservative, ultra right view on Poland and everything. And they want to restore, restore natural order, as they used to say. And by, by natural order, they think about the patriarchal vision of the world where the man is the head of the family. Tradition is the most important value. The Catholicism, of course, is too. And everything that touches the LGBT rights is hidden and the LGBT people didn't, simply don't have this rights because they don't deserve it as not part of the society. And we see that this is the common problem of those right-wing politicians in the Europe, that they are just, they wake up in the Europe way where they don't want to live in, into it and they don't, it's maybe too late for them, but suddenly they started this fight against the values. They don't see that they are losing because I simply think that they are losing this fight. And this is what, therefore they are so much hard in their language and they are fighting on a different level, but we need to be scared of, of them because they are doing hard work, great work, if you could say so, in a, on a different level, in, on this basic root level. They are very dedicated to these things. I seen, I was in 2016, I was at the meeting of so-called Agenda Europe, which is the right-wing group, and they meet each year in different places of, of the world. I see how well they was organized. I see how well this network is, is sharing their experience and how much devoted they are to this topic. And this is the thing that we are lacking and how, how well they are sponsored. And I, don't, I, will, I would not focus too, too much who is paying them because they are not watching of, of for the, if it's the rubble or is it the euro or is it the Polish water. They are just counting each of this and doing the, the best of it. I remember the one of those guests who was 2016 was the guy from the Spain who is the multimillionaire who is quite who was participating in the cost of this meeting. He's just anti LGBT. What's his name? Do you remember? Yes, he's the head of the Aste Oir NGO, which is fighting with the LGBT rights and human rights. His name is Derato. I don't remember. Is Santiago Derato? Aste Oir uh, is the if you put into the Google the Aste Oir head or the director you easily find him. And the problem is that we don't have, I know that there are some investigation journalists working on the right-wing movements in Europe, but they are not well founded. I, I think that they should much more money for it because sometimes I just met with the different uh, investigation journalists from this, uh, one was from the Italy, the second one was from the Finland, Finland I, and they don't know about each other. And they're having dipping, I mean, diving deep into this story, knowing quite a lot, but not sharing these things. So I think that this is the problem of us, that, that we are not well organized. And the network against us is very well organized in the secret groups, in the secret chats, sharing those views. But do you think that there is some hidden agenda or these people believe in this uh, radical conservatism? I, I believe that this agenda is not hidden. I think this is agenda is very open. Restore natural order. Restore the family values that in just in this view of the Catholicism and ultra uh, right wing views. This is the thing. Not power. I think that they need to uh, make the homework on the base level. They have this big cooperation with the Catholic Church, who is helping them a lot in a different country, differently in Poland, quite a lot. And in other, also, I remember how it was on this on, on this meeting with the Agenda Europe. But anyway, I think that the power, of course, is also important. They're making the schools of leadership. They are creating the future people in the power. They are creating the schools of leaders uh, where they teach others, the young students of law on the very base level. Then they are in the power uh, and they knew that they can trust them. They are lo loyal uh, soldiers of this fight and they are strictly believing them. If on the very end of this chain there is Russia agenda, of course, because this is the common sense. So I'm quite sure that they are sponsoring this somehow with the small and big amounts of money. But it's not something that that surprised me. The last question, how do you see the future and how Europe can help? I think that we need to redefine European Union. Right now we see how much the populism is influencing the people. The belief that people are the good and they can make a good choices. It's something that I would also like to believe, but we see how much we can influence the people's choices by the new tech, big tech, 
um, this very poor and cheap propaganda that maybe it's not so cheap because they put a lot of money on it. And we see that suddenly the Poland, which was quite progressive country, which has the first trans woman uh, in the parliament, suddenly began the country of the right wing government, which is doing everything wrong, putting us outside of the European Union and destroying the old thing that, we, that happened before, suddenly. And the European Union can do nothing to this because they don't use to such situations uh, and to make a sh- fast choices and to fast decisions uh, and so much scared about doing some fast decisions and strict decisions. So I see that we need to redefine how we want to have the European Union or do we want every European country to be in the European Union or just those countries who are sharing our views. This is the problem because there's so many things to connect in such a such a things, but if we could think about Poland coming to the European Union right now, we could think that they would be unable to do that by the rule of law crisis, the judges and stuff, and like this. So I think that we need to redefine European Union, have a strong language, strong voice on the, on the human rights, and therefore, and maybe after, could save the European Union because what is happening, this crisis, can pull apart the European Union into the, and divide it. And on the variant of the story, this end of the European Union, because nobody is sharing the same values. Or we are just closing eyes and just simply playing, that everybody is playing, sharing, but nobody is doing this, or just in some parts. So this is not how you're building unions. If, if your neighbors, when their house is burning, you just help them, not just make statements. And this is the problem with the European Union, that we simply was doing some statements, but not exact decision that was with the path to, end, to have a good end for everybody. I believe that we are on the good path right now, that European Union is reorganizing. Uh, we have wise politicians who see this. I, I'm just hoping that they will have majority, also the majority in the voting for the sanction of the human rights, that if there is a country, so this is, you just need the majority of the of the votes and there is no veto that can stop it. I just hope that this rule will come into power. I know that on the very end of the story, we can have a poll exit, but I also think that the moment when we will depend just on ourselves, we're just going to hate even more our government. And I don't think that it, it will happen because even right now, the politicians have these ratings are going down and down. So I think that the next election will show that the liberal candidate that will win. Our guest today was Bart Staszewski, a Polish LGBT activist. Thank you and till the next time.